to be talking a lot about some of the things that you teach, some of the things that you teach and some of the things that you live. And um, turning your doubts inside out to a joyous, juicy relationship is kind of the title of what we're going to be talking about. And uh, before we kind of dive into some of this, Carrie, I want to ask you, um, I know there's a lot of women here that are listening to the call who are thinking, well, that sounds great, turn your doubts inside out to a joyous, juicy relationship. But I'm wondering if, the, if in the context of what you share today, if you can also share uh, and speak to kind of the doubting mind, if you will, for those that are not only having doubts about themselves, but are having doubts about whether love is still even possible for them. Because I know and you know, a lot of people out there, and I know people in our, some people in our audience might be feeling this, they've kind of lost that hope or that belief that this joyous, juicy love that we're talking about is even possible for them. Maybe they feel it's too late, or maybe they've had their heart broken, or had just too, one too many uh, disappointments or heartbreaks. So I really want to tap into that because I really want to give people hope. Thank you so much, Michelle, for sharing that. And I just real right, right here, right with that, just say, yes, it is so possible. And I want to say this isn't trying to be, um, I don't know, a cheerleader. Uh, in a way, in a way I am. But in a way, I'm also pulling up the rope, helping people out of the well of despair. Why? I lived there for most of my life. I was haunted. I, I, I had like a haunted house of negative thoughts since I was very young. And I didn't understand it. I wanted to be happy. And all I was was truly miserable. And the world in which I came from, which was the New York City area and family and people around me, they couldn't. Re resonate. They couldn't really understand where I was or if I was willing to be so transparent with them where I was and even went to therapy for many years as an adult. And still, it helped, but it didn't stop this me living in that well with, with the constant negative voices until, and we'll get into it, until there was a moment that it shifted. Uh, and that changed my life and is now changing so many others. So I just say for those of you who are interested in that, that love, that juicy love in your heart, that 16-year-old love, <laughs> stay listening. That they're going to get in the meat and the potatoes and the juiciness of how to do it today. And it is my heart's intention to help you there and see see that you can do it. And it's not as difficult as you may think it is. Mm -hmm. Carrie, so before we get into how to create that, do you, do you resonate with something that I believe, which is I believe that if we have that desire in our hearts, that deep desire for that, juicy, joyful, passionate, loving relationship, that partnership relationship, that it, it's there for a, a reason, that it's there to be fulfilled, that it's, you know, divinely given, whether you believe in God or the universe or whatever, it's a divinely given desire. And I don't believe that it's planted there just to torment us or to cause us pain and angst because we recognize it's not there. I believe it's there in part to keep us moving through whatever we need to move through to be able to find that. Does that resonate with you? I resonate so deeply, Michelle, and I can, I'd like to respond to that. Um, again, I know the feeling. Um, this is why I do what I do is not because I, um, I was, you know, I, I thought this would be a great idea to be a relationship coach. And there's nothing wrong with that. I've always had a passion for psychology, but it's been driven because there is something in me that knew there was something more out there. This has been a very personal journey 
of unfolding the richness of wisdom through the body experience and, and life. And so it's, again, because I was on the depths of despair for so long, I, I can empathize with those that are here that are, are what you're talking about. So with that in mind, I want for those that are watching this and listening to consider uh, that all the, the negative voices, the pain, the torment, the feeling of loneliness, the feeling of a lack of connection with that divine you spoke of is all part of a billboard, a messenger. It's, it's, it's trying to nudge you to say, hello, you know, hello. You, it, it, you're in some discomfort. <laughs> and, and how do you know that? Because you're feeling that. But the unfortunate thing is it doesn't come uh, uh, with like uh, the blueprints. Okay, so now what we need to do is do this, 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 and this. But that's what I'm here to share with you today, to not run from the pain, mm -hmm. not um, uh, run away or try to push over or mentalize the feelings of the doubts and, and just, you know, get over it. Or there's another phrase, you know, we'll just suck it up. Man, What'd you say? Suck it up. Yeah, yeah. Um, man up are things. So, no, it's to snuggle into these feelings because they're your friends. They're not your enemies. And when you learn to embrace them and recognize, oh, my gosh, like my best friend has come to let me know that, that joy is around the corner. And who's your best friend at that moment? Is doubt. <laughs> is fear. It is uncomfortability. It's because you are so stuck at that moment and you're needing such um, a helping hand to wake up that the sensations are so intense. Now, they don't have to last. And, we're, and I'll, I'll get into that as we talk here. It can switch very quickly. But the first piece is recognizing, can you accept that the sensations are there? that you have certain issues of like, yeah, I'm scared. I, I, I want to love, but I'm afraid of it. I'm not sure if it's possible. So can you accept that? Just accept that and recognize that's an opinion, not the only opinion. Like I want love, but I'm, I don't believe it's possible anymore. Okay, that's an opinion or it's a truth, not the only truth. And then when you're willing, if you're willing to do that, then you're willing to go very quickly to transform this. So what I'm trying to say is, in the essence, in a key way here, Michelle, doubts aren't your enemies. They're your friends. Think about that. I ran from them my whole life. Look, I grew up in New York area. I was like a New York attorney with them and almost like, you know, like Rocky, like, hey, get the hell out of here. I'll I'll kick your butt, you doubts, because I was afraid of them, too. I didn't know what to do with them, and they were constantly around me. And I got heavy, dark, depressive thoughts around me, and I, I just put on a happy face, a happy smile, though, you know, but it wasn't the real smile because I, I didn't know how to deal with it. And uh, it was very scary, and um, it was the best I knew how. And so probably for a lot of folks here, it's the best you know how up to this moment. But I'm saying it's not the only thing. It's that the divine or, the, or, or God or nature, whatever calls you, is connected to that pain. The doubt is, the, is a divinely sent. It's a very compassionate and empathetic piece here that's in our brain and in our soul it's it's a very deep neuro deep holy connection thing because again if you if you re-scramble the word doubt michelle you get two words and t-o-b-u-d to bud to grow to blossom so is you know is doubt here to harm or hurt us i say no it's here to bring on the celebration, but we individually got to walk that walk. Instead of running away from it, we got to walk into it and say, okay, uh, I'm ready. 
I'm ready. I don't know where it's going, but I'm ready to embrace this. And I'm wanting to try something different because what I have been doing certainly hasn't been working. Right? Right. I mean, mean, so, uh, I mean, this work has taken me out, you know, from relationships to the business world, to working with professional athletes, to lately bringing me into the school system to work with kids who are suicidal. Mm -hmm. And working alongside their counselors and to realize that for them, like their thoughts are not what it's, you know, it's not what it appears to be. And when they can make that connection and, and, and things start really shifting and turning around and lights start going off. So it um, is so powerful. And, you know, our culture for the most part, it is suck it up. We, we're, we're, for whatever reason, we're beginning to, but we're, we're afraid to talk about our emotions that everybody's feeling. And I, I, I want to go off subject for a second, but it's on subject. Um, you know, in the last few weeks, uh, there have been a number of NBA basketball players who have come out and talked about their mental challenges of depression or anxiety. Uh, and you know, in in a in a world of which that so much wasn't allowed and wasn't talked about, and yet everyone realized the humanity of these few players that came out and shared about it, that how important it is, and they were get responses from all people around the world, from other other professional athletes to just regular folks saying, Thank you so much for for being human and and, and I resonate with you because you know, this, this mental, the stigma of, you know, it's not okay to be uh, uh, bruised mentally. But here's the, here's what I wanted to say for these athletes, if they had a broken arm or a a sprained ankle, immediately go take care of it and, and, and get to work so you can come back and be your full performing at your fullest level. But when our brains or emotions get bruised, who do we go to talk to to fix that? We don't even know what to do, really. And, and can we even talk about it? Because, hey, you know, that's, you know, like if you bring it up, like that's, um, you know, you're not handling yourself. Well, it's a, bro- it's a broken piece that, that's asking to be mended. It's a broken piece for you folks listening that the pain, all of it, and the more intense of it, is, is screaming at you to say, please, would you listen? I, you're hearing, but you're not listening. You, you're running from this, or you're not sure what to do. It's trying to get your attention. It got your attention. And I'm here with you, to Michelle, to bring on a new light, to, to shine the light of the tunnel, to say, accept these feelings of uncomfortability. They're your friends. And they're actually connected to the doubt because doubt, when it comes through the brain and says, you're not beautiful enough, you're, you're not going to, you know, he's not really into you. It in itself is neutral. It's not, it doesn't have emotion. It doesn't have this intensity, but when we don't catch it, because it can happen like in the blink of an eye, Mm -hmm. that doubt, right? And we either sometimes consciously or unconsciously do align to it. How do we know? When there's feelings in our body of uncomfortability, it could be a a feeling of hollowness in our heart. It could feel a pain in the heart. It could feel tension in our jaw. It could feel pain in our back. It could feel our bellies are tight. I know that I've experienced all these things, so and others too. And all of these are great signs that you're about to shift. And so the shifting is accepting, acknowledging it. Uh, And then the next piece um, would be to then say, feelings are my friends. Like a mantra, Uh, feelings are my friends. Feelings are my friends. Feelings are my friends. And you do that a few times. What's happening when we do that, after we've accepted the doubt or the feeling, this is like putting a brake on a runaway train. And the train has to come back. 
those feelings, when we do that mantra and we do it a few times, for most people in most situations, the feelings magically in 10, disappear within seconds. And they may be on a scale from one to 10. They might've been at a nine or a 10. And then literally in seconds, they go away. And I'm doing this for over a decade. And still every time I'm amazed for myself and what I'm sharing with others because I'm seeing what's going on in our neural net, in our subconscious. It All it wants us to do is acknowledge and take responsibility and say, hey guys, I got this, I'm handling it. And what I mean by that is when you acknowledge and say, feelings are my friends, it speaks directly to those sensations in the body and they start to release. And, the, and in literally seconds, instead of being in this for days or hours or weeks or months, it goes away. And we'll talk about the next step later on as we go there, but you'll see that that happens. And, um, you know, uh, you know I, I share this in the book, uh, in Love Forever book that I wrote with Wendy. Um, and now um, this system, it's, be, it's being welcomed into so many different industries uh, that I'm in the process of writing a book about this whole system of Turn the Doubts Inside Out and to really help people because I see it's needed in the world. Um, I'm not saying it's the best or the only thing. Uh, I just see it's very, very effective. Um, and I'm seeing, you know, places like in the MBA, places, you know, where it would never be open to before, places in schools that are wanting me to come in and, and teach meditation to middle schoolers and mindfulness. I'm like, 20 years ago, when I was doing all this, people wanted to put me in the insane asylum, literally, <laughs> you know, when I told them I was a meditator, they're like, what? That's weird. <laughs> Yoga was the same thing. And look what's happening. So, but now it's on the personal level to, to really transform. You can have this love and the level of the love you desire is equal to the level of the uncomfortability you're experiencing. Mm, that was, that was big right there. Think and feel that. So those who are in anguish and the level of the intensity of your anguish is equal to the level of your capacity to love or your talent or your passion. Mm -hmm. So it's a good sign you're uncomfortable. I didn't say you need to like it. No. I don't like it either. Look, I'm in the game too. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not out of this. I experience this too. I know it too, but I understand if and when now a cloud of intensity comes, it's not comfortable, but I get so excited because I know something amazing is about to happen if I go through the process. Okay. So just to clarify a little bit more, Carrie, because I think this is so important. Yeah, it feels to me, and tell me if I'm interpreting this right, that you're saying that our, our fears, our doubts, even our pain, those uncomfortable emotions or feelings that we're having are our friends because they're messaging that there's growth, there's an opportunity here. They're pulling us forward in a way. What I also think you're not saying, though, is you're not saying to stay stuck there recognize them as our friends but recognize that what they're offering is not necessarily the truth or at least it's not the whole truth it might be as you said an opinion or it might there might be some bits of truth that are there to help propel us forward but it's not the full big picture and i just wanted to make sure i'm kind of interpreting this correctly to also help our audience yes so uh the, the sensation, the doubt itself and this uncomfortable feelings associated with them only happens because we at that moment do not believe. We're not at the level of what we really want. We're not holding that space. Now, we may have held it 10 minutes ago or 10 days ago, but in that moment, we're not. And it's... and. And, and or maybe we have worked on this and then all of a sudden a newer intensity comes. Mm -hmm. It's saying that um, something, yes, even greater is about to happen. 
And it's not here. It's here very, it's very positive. We just need to translate the languaging. It's like, you know, if you, if you're learning a new language and you could say something in one way that means good, like I'm just giving an example, not being very specific on it, but the way you said it or the way you mix the word up with the other word and it, and it came out, well, that means that's bad for that person. And, and it was just uh, understanding of translation. This is what I'm trying to share. The translation is that we think doubts are bad. Doubts are good. If we didn't have the doubt and the feelings, think about it. We would be like zombies. We wouldn't even know, recognize for most of us that we were off track. Mm -hmm. So this is a gift that it's telling us we're off track. But just that also at the same moment, something amazing, truly amazing is about to happen. But we got to prepare the way. you got to transform it to, to get there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and to, to acknowledge it. And, and when I say yes, it's the tr truth or opinion. It's just that's a piece just for us to partly to acknowledge what's happening. And it also tells our subconscious that I'm taking responsibility here. I'm not trying to push you away. I'm not trying to blame you. I'm not trying to put you under the rug uh, or the butt um, to the doubts. I, I'm going to embrace you. Uh, and because I'm, and the more you do this, and, and, I, and I offer this to those who are willing to listening to this, do this process. Uh, and see what happens for yourself. I, I say, don't listen to me. It's great I share these ideas, but um, do this. Do this process and see what happens in your own body because that's what happens. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's universally experienced from people from all over the world, even folks I work with in Japan who English and language is a opposite structure. And, and I don't really yet speak much Japanese, and some of the Japanese folks don't really speak English. But there's enough that they understand and see, yes, this is true. It's working. The system is turning it around. So, so if you're yearning for that love, that relationship uh, to, to connect with, and maybe like you said, Michelle, yeah, your heart might have been broken in the past, or, or it's been a long time since you've had a relationship, and maybe you think you're too old. All of that, just that thought, okay, I'm too old. Let's just apply it, okay? Um, so that's the doubt. I would say, okay, let's turn it inside out. But first we need to do is accept it's a truth. I'm too old to be in a relationship. Okay. I didn't say it's the only thing, but can you accept it, that it's there? It happened. You had this thought, right? Okay, that's all. Acknowledge it. And that's why I say it's an opinion, not the only opinion. And then you go, okay. So there are probably feelings there of um, when you have this thought, I'm too old to be attracted to a man. Uh, and then I say, okay, feelings are my friends. Feelings are my friends. Feelings are my friends. Feelings are my friends, okay? You say that, and you don't do it like you're. Some do the rosary and and just like try to get through it as quick as possible. No, be in your body with it. And you'll see the feelings start um, diminishing. It, and then now you can go to the last step, which is then putting in what I call an anchor or an affirmation because you've cleared out the uh, the intense situations. Your body is now ready. Uh, like, for, like a, uh, um, such nourished, uh, land, uh, earth for a seed to take root and grow. Your, your, your body is now ready. It doesn't have all this agitation of, of the doubt and fear in there. And now you say, you go back to that original doubt, which is I'm too old to, to be in a relationship and you turn it inside out. You say, I choose to know. I am the perfect age to, to find a, a beautiful man now. I ch or I choose to be so excited and have such confidence that I will attract a beautiful man into my life now. And you say that over and over and over like a mantra. And 
here's the thing. I, I guarantee if you do this process, I guarantee it, you will create what you want, the essence of what you want. You will start, you will create it and you will start feeling a shift in your body before it happens. You will start feeling your heart uh, shift. But it, for most of us, this is a pattern that's been going on for a long time. So give it a chance. It, it does take some time to shift our neural net, you know, and, and it, it can take some weeks uh, for, for the transformation to happen. But the sensation of the doubts will start to lessen and it, it will get less and less. And I explain this more. It's actually in the book, In Love Forever. There's a chapter on all this. And I'll share more later on, too, of how if this really is exciting people, how it can get even more help you know, and, and really do something today with that. So um, I didn't mean to drag on. I hope I'm making sense with what I'm sharing with this piece. Yeah, no, I feel like that's, I feel like that's very valuable. And I feel like it's a, it's, it's a way to um, get out of being, feeling like you're stuck. Cause I feel like so many people feel like they're just stuck in the same place and not able to move forward and not really knowing how or having a tool for moving forward and of course our typical response when we have those uncomfortable thoughts for me one of two things is my typical response and i think this is probably true for most people the first is i want to just run away from it and ignore it and try to stuff it down or or whatever because it's not fun it's not pleasant or I can get into this downward spiral kind of thinking where one thought might lead to another negative, disappointing, sad, depressing thought. And then I can find myself so discouraged or just in such despair that I'm in a fetal position on the bed and can hardly even move. Yes. And beautiful description. And I can relate to both of those very much. And I'm going to share with you that both as intense as those are can be, you can switch out of them in minutes, in seconds, using this system. It will work for you. I'm just asking, are you, are you, are you ready? Are you hungry enough to make a change? Uh, I'll ask like a lot of golfers who, you know, I work with a lot of golfers, men, okay? And men aren't generally the most open emotionally, right? right. You know, I'm an oddball. Okay, I admit it. So. Um, so a lot of golfers who get pissed off when they hit the ball into the woods or miss the putt, from amateurs to high professionals, top professionals in the world that I connect up with, and they're frustrated, I go, okay, how's that working for you? And that gets them. Because it's like, yeah, like, is it, is it really helping you being frustrated? Is it really helping you ladies that you're tied up on, you know, on the bed in the fetal position? Aren't you sick and tired of that? And, and here is a way out. I say, I, I offer to try it. Listen, I don't say believe me, because why would you? But I'm saying, give it a shot and see what happens for yourself. That, you, that, you be the scientist. You're the one. And, and I will tell you this. I've only seen this not work once, this system. And that one time is only when we're not willing to do the process of the system. That's when it doesn't work. Otherwise, I've seen it always work for films. So, um, and, and it's something, it's, it's come to me, but it's why I'm sharing it. I'm so passionate, Michelle, is because I came from the depths of hell and despair and depressed. And like you said, you see me now and you go, Carrie, you were depressed? Michelle, I'll give you the phone number of my brothers, okay, <laughs> and or anybody, and 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 just say, do you know Mumbles? And they're going to, oh yeah, that's my brother Carrie. Yeah, my father called me Mumbles, okay, because oh. up until thirteen, I didn't talk. I mumbled. I was since I was so shy and so sensitive and so affected by lots of things going on in my home, my parents' home and. You know, just um, I understand this this misery, 
but I also understand now why I had why I didn't talk. It's because I had this inside of me, Michelle, that I yearned for something to to be happy. And all I was as a kid was miserable. From the first breath, I wasn't happy. I um, I, re I remember as much as as far back as I can recall. I I wasn't happy, and I had this insecurity around. Me. I've come out of that, and and now I am so passionate to to share because I've gone through I've gone through the whole arc. So I know all the graffiti on the wall. I might not have your experience, but I understand your experience. And that's why I'm just so dedicated to help others because I go, hey, if I came out of this, mumbles. I mean, the things that are happening to me now and talking and opportunities in front of thousands of people, both of my parents are, are passed on. But I, every time I, after a talk, I kind of finish and I look up to the sky and say, hey, Dad, can you believe mumbles? <laughs> like, I can't believe this. Like, what's happening? It's so wonderful, and if it's for me, it can. Ha it's waiting for you too. This world needs us. It's waiting for the warriors. You're a warrior. If you're on this call and you're in pain, it says you're a warrior, and that you can. You want this loving relationship, but first, you got to have a loving relationship with yourself. And this is on the way to have that, to turn the doubts inside out, to turn the insecurities inside out, to turn, you know, this hopelessness. If, look, if you didn't want the love, if you weren't wanting to have a love in your relationships, in your relationship and have one and felt completely hopeless, you wouldn't be listening to this call, right? This video right now. That's a sign right there. And I'm telling you, it's not a sign for, oh, I'll just keep watching another video and let's go keep going. No, this is a moment. Celebrate. It's the moment of transformation begins now. Follow these steps and, and they will shift your reality. Yeah. It's, yeah. And Carrie, um, and you and I, um, you know, we're having a little conversation before we began this formal conversation and you and I have shared some of the experiences of our lives with each other, you know, with your uh, spouse passing away from cancer. I've shared with you a little bit about my experience with the cancer journey and we've shared some of our challenges with each other personally. And um, one of the things that I really believe, and I think this is kind of a message that is coming forward with this interview that is so powerful and important is that just because we can't see it in the moment does not mean it does not exist. There is always possibility beyond what our eyes can see in every situation. And you and I have talked about how some of the most challenging experiences of our lives, though we might have chosen, given the choice, maybe to say, yeah, I'll give that one a pass, have also had tremendous gifts in them. And I guess I'm saying this because I really want to encourage everyone who's listening to tap into, though your experiences may have been somewhat different or may vary from what Carrie and I have experienced, we're all unique. I want you to tap into honoring yourself and really honoring how far you've come, all you've survived, all you've lived through. I mean, you, each of you out there, you're like a conquering hero. And I just think, you know, give ourselves enough credit for that. We don't give ourselves that as enough credit for how far we've come, who we've become, what we've learned, what we've gained, how we've grown. And the fact that you're here means you're the kind of person that's dedicated to continuing on that path of growth. Wow. Yes, Michelle. So much. You, you nailed something so important is to acknowledge, yes. Um, even folks who don't necessarily deal with what we're talking about, who are very successful, business owners, CEOs or whatever, there's oftentimes people at the top of the top, there's, they, they have everything we would ever imagine, financially beautiful homes, work, 
families, and they feel unfulfilled. Like the same essence, I'm sure a lot of us are feeling on this call. And it, a part of that is because they haven't acknowledged their successes. Mm -hmm. And just like you're saying so beautifully, and I love what you're sharing. I know for a lot of us, it hasn't been that easy. But to what well, we're here, we're here, we're ready, we're wanting more. And to acknowledge that, yes, I accept. And I'm choosing, take a second to give ourselves a hug. Hey. I've gotten here along this journey and I'm here now and I'm ready to take the next step. And without going into it so much, that's so powerful to our quote unquote inner child, to the, to the emotional child in us that's so alive and well, that is wanting to connect with you. Like imagine a young child, a, a, you as like a young child, but you're the adult, all of us right now. And that young child just came to you and said, I'm scared. I, I don't know what's happening. And I got a boo-boo and someone said something bad to me. How would you be? You would be, oh, you would comfort that child, right? You would take them in and listen and understand them. And, and I'm sure potentially hug them too. Give some physical contact and let them know it's going to be okay. And what I'm trying to say here is give that to yourself because your emotional body with the doubt is doing that. It's saying, would you hug me? I, I need to connect here with you and I'm trying to, but I, I, for some reason, I'm not getting your attention. The, and the more we don't do it, the more the pain gets louder because it's trying to get our attention. It's trying to, it's trying to be acknowledged for you the adult self and the, the emotional child self come one and, and love together and then connect with that divine if that calls you and, and go deeper. And I'm telling you, you will start to, from this place, the pain, the suffering will start to go away um, and and you'll be you'll be a beacon of a lighthouse. I, I, I want to take a moment and give a case study from actually a woman who was on the last um, uh, experience we did, your last summit that I connected up with. And she, her experience was just like you're talking about. She was in relationships that um, she got divorced because her her husband wasn't really paying attention to her and open to helping their challenges. She had a few kids, many years had gone by and she didn't believe anymore it was possible. She was on your summit, heard me speak. We connected after and I coached her for a few months, helped her through her doubts and fears. And she was like, Oh my God, I'm I'm transforming each session. Like she could feel it. And by the by before we finish, she was in a relationship, and it's going on amazingly well and and it's such a beautiful thing that's happening because she transformed herself and her believability in that she can have this then it will you're then it can happen it's kind of like it's a think it of like a lighthouse. And when we have the doubts, the light, the, the energy of that lighthouse goes away to shine the light onto the ocean for those people passing by in the boats. But then when we clear the doubts and start acknowledging that there are friends and it's trying to help us and we're not afraid of it anymore and we connect to the divine, recognizing this is all the beautiful dance that's helping us have what we want. Now your lighthouse is strong. And people feel it. Mm -hmm. You know, we communicate much more through our energy than through our words. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And so when, when we're radiating this joy and this love, we don't even have to say a word. People feel it. And we become like we, a magnets for people. And they want to be around us. So ladies, if you're looking for a guy, Work this out, work yourself. So, you know, and then and feel and turn things around so you can be this joy 
all the time, you will feel more love in yourself. It's not when a guy comes in my life, then I'll feel this wholeness. No. Seal up the holes now. And then when a beautiful ma a man will be attracted to you as you're clear of what your vision, your values, your 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 what you want are. Because you know, I'm sure a lot of folks, you know, on this call have have done that. What's their vision list and what is their wish list, and yet still not attracting. Why? Well, you've gotten somewhat clear, but you have these doubts still in the way that that they're the they're the key to to turning it around. Turn the doubts inside out. And you will you will be flooded with opportunities. Yeah. We will. And it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't. Um, it doesn't matter what body you have. Um, it's not about changing or losing the weight or whatever. It's not. It really, I mean, you may want to if that's your situation. But it's your energy. That's the most important. That's for guys. We're attracted Yes, to the physical body, but to the energy. Yeah. And, and that will, the, the weight will, if you need to lose weight, the weight will fall off as you keep working this out too, uh, one piece. But it's just be believing in ourselves and, and, and learning to love ourselves more. As we love, funny enough, again, turn the word backwards, love and evolve, spell it backwards, evolve, to me, evolve. We're evolving as we're learning to love, as we're learning to transform these doubts, we're evolving into mastering our life and to have the riches, everything that life, life wants to give us what we want to have, but we, we have to be ready to receive. And when we have doubts, it's saying, it's just saying you don't believe yet or believe enough yet. It's not like a penalty. It's not like bad. It's actually really good. So life, life's going to bring us at the level of we're ready to receive at any moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I really believe that. And I really believe that this, this concept this um, principle you've been teaching of turning the doubts inside out is really a gateway because it allows that self-sabotaging uh, those self-sabotaging thoughts feelings and behaviors that can keep love at a distance um, from getting in the way so that we are able to be ready and open and available to receive and i believe with all of my heart that we attract love so much more from a place of who we are if we're talking about real love than anything that we're doing so while it can be helpful to know how to talk to a man or how to um what to text or what to do or say on a first date you know some of these things sure there can be tips or ideas that can be valuable or useful in terms of our communication style or conveying what we want to convey but it's really all about who you are i mean we are attracted to people because of their true essence and that's what you're really talking about and i believe that this this concept that you've been talking about and what you teach carrie in terms of turning your doubts inside out are is a gateway to love it's also a gateway to us being more centered in what we might call our true essence yes and um and yes and all the tips you're talking about i mean i can share and you're going to share i'm sure with lots of other folks but that's okay but this today is like the deep core center and i want to share with you uh, and for all women who are listening to understand you all carry a level of sweetness it's a sweetness that that's what men we want in our lives we carry sweetness too but not at the level this is just naturally given you know that women have this sweetness it's more than men and 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 yet then there can be soured why because you're being challenged to rise up to realize your fullest potential so it is about therefore knowing that your sweetness is there knowing this is why so many women 
who are beautiful. And I want to say, you all are beautiful. It takes all shapes and sizes and all types of people out there. You're, who you are is beautiful. It's to realize that um, when you hear, I'm not beautiful enough, that's the divine in you saying, hello, you, you're not loving yourself. Would you love yourself right now? Take a moment and do what we're sharing and take that time to, I choose to love myself now. And when you start to do that, and you start to really, at first it might be acting because it's so far from you, but when you start to do it and start to change it around, I guarantee people are going to be saying, what are you doing differently? You seem so much more alive and, and all of this. And for the guys, there, you might have your wish list, which I shared a few moments ago. And yet, and your guy might be, be right around you of everything you're wanting. But again, energetically doesn't feel, it doesn't feel that impulse of attractiveness maybe at that moment and may pass you by. Because you're in still this lack of love this story that's running work that out turn it around and in a quick time that same guy may pass and all of a sudden go and start talking to you at um you may encounter someone at the you know at the line at the supermarket or whatever and not saying literally the same guy but it could be but i'm saying what the person you're looking for out there is waiting for you, waiting for you to embody your beauty, and then you're going to attract it. That makes sense? Yep, yep, absolutely. Okay. Well, Carrie, this has been such a great conversation. I've really loved it. I've really enjoyed it. And uh, I feel like I could talk to you forever. <laughs> ah, well, I'd love to. <laughs> There's so much more to share. Yeah. I yeah. know. I know we've just touched the ah. tip of the iceberg. Did you have one more thing you wanted to say? I, I, I did want to share something, Michelle. That okay. um, So I'd like to share with you, Michelle, as we're finishing up a, a piece. Uh, um, Someone who I'm coaching just shared with me uh, this book called An Uncommon Bond uh, by Jeff Brown. And there's a section in a one paragraph I'd like to share that kind of sums up what love is and, um, and see, if, see if you relate to it, okay? okay? You can connect from all kinds of places, energetic harmony, sexual alchemy, intellectual alignment, but they won't sustain love over a lifetime. You need a thread that goes deeper, that moves below and beyond the shifting sands of compatibility. That thread is fascination, a genuine fascination with someone's inner world, with the way they organize reality, with the way they articulate their feelings, with the unfathomable and bottomless depths of their being. To hear their soul cry out to you again and again, and to never lose interest in what it is trying to convey. If there is that, then there will still be love when the body sickens, when the sexuality fades, when the perfection projection is long shattered. If there is that, you will swim in love's waters until the very last breath. Wow, that's beautiful. That's amazing. That was just like goosebump material. Yeah, that was yeah. amazing. Yeah. That so is beautiful. Take that in for ourselves and share that in your relationships. You're going to have the love you want. You're guaranteed. Just do the small steps that you got to do to shift, to clear out, pull out the roots. I mean, the, 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 um, not the roots. <laughs> uh, the thi what do we call that? <laughs> the things that are around plants that we don't the want. Weeds. Uh, the weeds, thank you. Uh, pull out the weeds around our heart and around our mind of disbelief. And <laughs> you will have what you want. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Mm. 
Wow, Carrie, that was beautiful. I just absolutely loved our conversation today. Mm -hmm. It means so much to me, and I know you're helping so many people out there, and I really admire and appreciate who you are and um, the beautiful heart that you have and the work you're doing in the world, helping so many people. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Michelle. It's really, as I said, an honor to be here and doing this. And I share those same sentiments of uh, so many uh, folks, I'm sure women who are listening here today, just love you and love what you're offering to them. So thank you as well. And Carrie and I also thank all of you for being here. We mm -hmm. honor you and appreciate your time, your attention, and for the commitment that you have to continue to learn and grow in your own life. And we're honored to be a part of your journey. And uh, we, again, thank you for being here today, and we'll see you soon. Bye for now.